Good morning. Welcome to PSG of Mercer County and happy Aloha Friday. So PSG, the Professional Service Group of Mercer County is a group that is here for you, anybody that is in any kind of career transition. And it uh, doesn't really matter why, it may be some, you were affected unexpectedly by your own office, a former company, they made a decision internally, or you're making the decision on your own to take your career in your hands and go down in another direction. We're here to provide the resources, information that will help you be more efficient and effective in your own job search. Um, in addition to being Aloha Friday, uh, we mentioned it is nice weather out, so you'd be happy to know that actually today is National Spimoni Day. And if you don't know what that is, that is a, a creamy frozen dessert, uh, usually from Southern Italy. And so you can go celebrate with a Spimoni or I guess any ice cream if you want. I think today's going to be a nice ice cream day and celebrate National Spimoni Day. Just before I introduce Eileen, would like to let you know that we do have uh, a couple of announcements. Uh, if you've been here before, you know these. If you're visiting for the first time, I think you'll be very interested. Uh, for one thing is we do have our very own LinkedIn group, and it is called PSG of Mercer County. And really just about everything we do is branded to PSG of Mercer County. Um, our LinkedIn group, if you are not yet a member, we have over 1,600 members in our LinkedIn group. So it's a lot of people that we have in our LinkedIn group. And these are all people that have been through our program before. We only accept in our group you. We only want people who've been through our program at least once. We're trying to keep the, the salespeople out, not salespeople by career, but salespeople that are actively selling to large groups. Um, the list collectors, the name collectors, we want to keep those people away from kind of posting and disturbing the members in our group. But what's nice is if you are not yet in our LinkedIn group or a member, all you have to do is look for the group, click on the join button. I don't remember where it is. I think it's on the right side now. And then uh, I'll check uh, LinkedIn every day or two for people that have recently requested to join. If I don't know you or if I don't recognize your name, I may send you a LinkedIn email just asking you your interest and have you been here before, uh, just to make sure that you have indeed been to our group. Or what you can also do, you can send me a short email uh, to our uh, own web, I'm sorry, our own email address, PSG of Mercer County at gmail.com, PSG of Mercer County at gmail.com. Just say, hey, David, just letting you know, uh, I clicked uh, to join the group and I attended the meeting last week. And then that'll just be my quick reference and I can just accept you into the group right away. Um, we have over 1,600 people that do contribute. You're welcome to. Maybe you've got one of those great emails about a terrific job that just doesn't apply to you. You could take that email, copy, and paste it into our LinkedIn group as a discussion and share it with others. Your activity in LinkedIn can increase your ability to be seen and found in LinkedIn because you'll be an active user. That's one way to be active, posting in groups. In addition, we do have our website. It is also PSG of Mercer County. It is PSG of Mercer County .org. The website has over 120 pages of content. And uh, one of the pages we have, it's a menu item or tab right at top, is called our resources page. And we have links now to 42 different resources in that page. Okay, we're gonna stop a moment. Sounds like someone is not yet muted. So if you're the one with the mic on, please mute your mic just so we don't have any more accidental interruptions. There it is. Good, I think I got, good, thank you. So sorry about that. Will be edited out. And um, so I was saying that we have uh, um, our resources page. There are links and icons to 42 different groups. Um, um, one, I'm sorry, 15 of them are different uh, job seeker support groups, networking groups, uh, kind of like this. Um, our sister groups are there and lots of other groups as well. So you can get a, a access or learn about some of them that are there. Um, also, what we have is um, 25 links to different career resources. Uh, they could be um, 
uh, some self-help pages, uh, links to the different state agencies. Uh, so those are there as well. And then, I, you know, I'm talking with people over the last five, six months during the coronavirus pandemic, um, I realize a lot of people are excessively stressed or a few people have told me how stressed they are. So I found a couple of others that may be interested as well in terms of links. One is a personal wellness link that we have, helps with meditation and yoga and other things like that. We're very wellness oriented. So you could click on that and all of the, from the comfort of your home. And the other is also a mental health link as well and a way to um, contact even a professional if you need to or want to or know someone who may need to. And it's all so it can be done anonymously. So I'm not advocating or not advocating or suggesting that you do or don't click those. They're just available if you ever felt you wanted to uh, pursue those on your own. So you know we're very attentive to trying to provide as many resources to our members or anyone who comes to our website. Um, we do like to celebrate landings. So if you have landed or if you've gone through a really cool interview process, you're welcome to tell us about it, but do so in chat. Uh, the chat is a little uh, icon on the upper right of your screen. Kind of looks like a little cartoon bubble when a comic book or cartoon character would be talking. And so usually there's a number next to it. That's uh, the number of chats you haven't read yet. Some people do also like to put their contact information or other websites that you want to share, and that's fine as well. So um, if you have any good news to share, just post that in the chat. And uh, we will be sharing all the, sh the chat dialogue uh, a little later today uh, through the PSG of Mercer County website. So if you want to come back and print any of that later, you can. You can also download the chat before the end of the meeting in the upper left corner of the go to meeting screen is a go to meeting icon it's got kind of the asterisk with the go to meeting and when you click on that there's a drop down menu the third item is to save the chat locally to your pc not really sure that pays to do it right now because the chat isn't really well filled out but that's for later um, a couple of ground rules in just a moment um, i will be introducing uh, eileen our presenter she actually does have control of the screen now, and Eileen, you're welcome to start your presentation if you want, and just wait for me to complete your introduction. And so Eileen will be uh, having control of the screen and the slide deck. The slide deck will be available also this afternoon, and I will tell you about that shortly. Please keep your audio or your microphone on mute, and that's the mic button at the bottom of your screen, so do make sure it is not green, I believe it's usually white with a line through it. And so make sure that you are keeping yourself on mute so we don't have any kind of accidental interruptions. And also, uh, if you want to ask a question, and also we're gonna be having some exercisers, uh, Eileen's gonna have some exercises, we're gonna use chat. Right now we're almost 60 people, that number is going to go up, trying to communicate by voice is just going to be very difficult with a large group so uh, when you have a question please put that in chat but proceed it with the word question so you know if you have a question about communication style you would type it in chat question tell me more about communication style something like that and then that way it'll allow me to make sure I catch the questions among all the other chats that are out there. Just make it a bit more efficient for me to find your question and to make sure that I don't miss any. So I'll just ask you to proceed it with the word question. Otherwise, um, uh, Eileen will facilitate the um, exercises a little while and we will just take her lead on the exercises. But for questions, proceed it with the word question. Okay. So with that, I am just very pleased this morning to welcome Eileen and Sinet. Eileen is a communication specialist who helps professionals communicate at their best. As a consultant, trainer, facilitator, and coach, she focuses on growing clients' communications confidence and performance. For over 30 years, Eileen's company, Speaking That Connects, has served individuals from various industries, pharmaceutical, legal, healthcare, financial, technology, and non-for-profit organizations to enhance the impact of their presentations, networking speeches, interviews, keynotes, interpersonal relationships, and even trade show conversations. Her mission is to promote speaker confidence, message clarity, and audience connection. Eileen has a Master's of Arts in Speech from Kane University and a Bachelor of Science degree in the Communication Sciences from Emerson College in Boston. 
She has advanced training on improvisational and psychodrama. And when not speaking and coaching, she takes tap dancing lessons, she gardens, volunteers at local theater, and attends live jazz events. So PSG of Mercer County is very pleased to welcome coach and trainer Eileen Sinet. Thank you. Hello, everyone. It's so weird not to be able to see either you or myself, but I am committed to growing presence and sharing what I know about being present and staying present. So I want to let you know that um, I was asked to do this presentation in the middle or the beginning of the pandemic, somewhere around March, one of the nonprofit organizations that I speak for said people are so stressed there you know zoom was consuming them and uh they didn't have the technical digital experience and they were working from home and their children were being rambunctious and the telephone was ringing and the doorbell was going and the stress was over the top and so the request came to me uh, to do a program or a webinar on staying present for Zoom meetings. And I realized very quickly that I am not the expert on Zoom meetings, or at least in the beginning of that pandemic, my whole career was based on face-to-face -face interaction. I was um, very grateful and gifted in the direction of human communication and interaction. And so uh, the digital platform was a bit of a stretch for me. So rather than staying present, uh, being present, staying present, I thought, well, where do I fit in? And where I fit in was the concept of presence. So as you can see from this uh, kind of graphic bio, one of the one of my areas of expertise is working with executives and speech presentation coaching and many of those uh, senior level people supported by their corporations have had me work with their quote executive presence and I'm going to just ask you to do a yes or a no a y or an n in the chat if you think presence, personal professional presence is related to how you look, your physical self. Just, I'm curious, it's kind of a thermostat for me, maybe a survey to understand um, where you're coming from in terms of presence. Is it a physical characteristic? So David, you're gonna have those there. We don't need to address them right now. Because what I felt and feel in terms of presence is that while some physical aspects definitely contribute to it, there are many, many people of different sizes, shapes, colors, and characteristics who pr project presence. So it's a it's little bit more than how you look. Our agenda today then is in order to understand how to stay present um, and be present, I think we need to define what presence is and it may not have only one singular definition. And then look at some of the challenges of what gets in the way in terms of, quote, staying present. And then come up with some suggestions on how do you manage being present and staying present in order to what I think happens is grow your presence. And this is like I don't have a PhD in presence. <laughs> so I am welcoming your input because I think collaboratively we'll get the best result. So here's your first, uh, well, second question. I want you to think about a time or an experience or a moment where you've been so absorbed, so focused on an activity or an experience 
immersed in that, that you lost all sense of time and felt one with that activity. I'm going to help some of you along because if you're like me, when a trainer asks that kind of a question, sometimes I go blank, blank. It's like it doesn't come to me that quickly. Uh, so maybe it's um, taking a walk in the park, or maybe it's cooking, or maybe it's participating in your favorite sport, or being an observer, uh, a fan of an athletic feat. Maybe you're a music fan and it's uh, like myself, uh, watching and listening to live jazz. Maybe it's yesterday's sunset. Or for Joe, that wonderful cave experience. So just think about what experience, activity, simple, complex, usual, unusual, comes to mind when you think I'm totally, quote, present and immersed in that experience. I'm in the moment of that experience, 100%. And we call that flow. And uh, if you could write that in the chat, it would be great because I'll get to see it later. So when are you in flow? And it can be several times a day. It could be never. Maybe there's so much going on that flow is really hard to get to. And I see I have a quotation that looks a little bit odd there. Okay, moving forward. So, this is a definition by Caroline Welsh, who wrote The Gift of Presence. I highly recommend this text if you have any interest in uh, the concept. The state of receptive awareness that enables us to pay attention to what's happening right now in this moment without being carried away by thought opinion, judgments. So you are in a state of curiosity and kindness towards yourself and others, unjudgmental in the moment. I long for those moments. And for me, sometimes it's exercise besides jazz. Obviously, tap dancing is one of my passions. And in that time of my lesson, I am totally in my body, in the listening of the instruction, in the correction of the movement. But the thoughts about what I have to do when I get back to my desk or on the way home and what groceries to buy, that's gone. But it doesn't happen 100% of the time. Because humans being very cognitive creatures and because they are judgmental animals um, are wired in this way of uh, thinking a lot. It's hard to turn off thought. So I'm gonna read what's on the screen. 50% of our time is spent thinking about something other than what we're doing. So we're thinking while we're in the moment of doing something else, which means we're not 100% in the moment if say um, it's other than thinking. And 80% of the time we're thinking about something that's stressful. So our mind tends to go south, go negative. Uh, and that is part of the human um, neurology, biology. And then 47% um, of the time we are wandering, mind wandering. And that can be when we're having fun. So uh, it says, you know, even when respondents are having sex, conversing or exercising, their mind could still be moving in lots of other directions. 
So as I mentioned before, my expertise has always been in person. And when the pandemic uh, began and there was work from home and my clients were no longer um, available to see me, et cetera, face to face, I had to pivot to Zoom like so many of us. And I couldn't figure it out. I just, it wasn't the digital, it was the experience. It's like, why is this so different? How is this so different? Why am I having such a hard time? So here you see on one side of the screen, a typical chamber breakfast meeting. And then on the right, what turns into um, our digital meetings. Of course they look different, but I was trying to capture the inside experience of and understand it for myself, like why was I having so much trouble? And finally, it, it just dawned on me that I was use, you know, I was trying to use what I had learned in terms of human communication and influence and effectiveness. I was trying to use the tools of one kind of communication to and, and transfer them to the platforms that were digital and it wasn't working. Eye contact didn't work. Now I can look at the camera in front of me and give you the impression that I'm seeing you individually. But in a room, I knew how to use my eyes to connect with individuals. And that doesn't happen in a two dimensional screen. So also there's no feeling of you giving back to me personally. And as a speaker, it is so um, engaging, connecting, um, invigorating to, to receive the subtle energetic pieces of, I don't know, pieces of energy, the subtle energetics of your communication, nonverbal or verbal, that you have this presence, you have this energy around you, whether you speak or don't speak, that has more to do with who you are and your total experiences and how you live life than how you look and, and, and behave on a physical level. So the differences of the three dimensional, almost like here we have a sculpture um, versus a, a, a photograph. You know, there's a different dimension. There's a different way eye contact is received and um, given. And you can't really see the subtleties of uh, nonverbal communication in such a small rectangular space. Um, one attorney said to me, you know, in the virtual trials, uh, because, you know, attorneys, um, courtroom attorneys were now remote in civil cases. You can't kind of elbow your, um, the person you're representing, your client, uh, for rolling his eyes. You, you know, you can't kind of do those uh, subtleties of uh, interactive communication. So really hard to connect individually. And as I said, that was the area of expertise. So it's an interesting quote that this professor has, and I bet it is true for many um, partners, because I know having uh, been married, there was often a time where I said, you're here, but you're not here. You know, you're not listening to me because I'm not seeing you listen to me. And so this quote, it's easier being in each other's presence or in each other's absence than being in the constant presence of each other's absence. And, and right now, I have no idea how present or absent you are, because I can't see you. And um, you can ask yourself, you know, even give yourself a rating, because many of you might be multitasking. Webinars lend themselves to multitasking. Whether you are 100% present, 80% present, 10% present, curious. So defining presence was the beginning. Um, 
it's a state of awareness where you're in flow, where you have um, the focus on the present moment without going into your cognitive thought process or judgment areas. And it's also an energetic aspect of who you are, not just your physicality. I believe the sum total of experiences, attitudes, opportunities, and how you manage oneself in life. So you may want to think about, and if you want later to put in the chat or now, people that you find to exude presence, personally, professionally, and maybe we'll have that uh, in a Q&A towards the end. David, uh, before we move into these challenges, um, are there any questions that you feel we should address right this minute? Uh, no questions yet. A lot of people were answering yes and no to your uh, exercises earlier, but no questions yet. Great. Okay, so I'm going to continue. I have four different challenges that I want to talk about, and perhaps there are more that you want to share. So the one that drove this initial presentation had to do with external distractions. People at home, children at home, um, managing time, uh, interruptions, digital glitches. These were the initial challenges at the beginning of the pandemic when work from home became the rule rather than the exception. And so uh, maybe some of you had that more than others. I don't have little children. It didn't impact me. But I did have a client whose cat walked across her lap while we were doing a lesson. And um, she had to remove the cat. And um, it was a little bit of a distraction, not much. Uh, like I said before, at the beginning, I live close to the emergency medical squad and the hospital, so a fire department, I'm right on the main drag. So if there's any kind of crisis in town, I hear about it. And if my window's open, you'll hear about it. So external distractions, and actually those are um, managed differently than others. And we'll talk about that when we get to management. But I think the inner communication challenges are probably the ones that are most important and the ones that we can do more about. Um, I know, and I'll be really um, vulnerable here, that when I could no longer be in front of a group with people to interact to and was told, remote, you're going to have to learn remote, I was devastated. It was like not only all my tools and training and expertise was no longer going to be valid. I don't like seeing myself in photographs. I didn't want to see a bad hair day. I wanted to look the way I look when I go into a business situation. So I not only had to learn a challenge that I might call external, which was the digital system, I had to pivot my thought process from kind of a perfectionistic image oriented um, persona to kind of a neutral um, accepting one. So the inner communication attitude of, oh crap, this isn't good for me, negative. Oh, I hate to be seen negative. I had to totally rework that. And that's, um, for many people, not a big deal. But for many people, it can be a big deal. So the inner communication of shifting from a negative mindset to a more open one and or to at least a neutral one. Just as a matter of educating you, because I am a speech language communication major, um, 
We speak about 16,000 words per day, a little piece of trivia that may or may not interest you. But our inner thoughts are speaking more because they can, because our minds are able to think faster than we speak. And so we are, it's hard, it's hard to get silent. It's hard to be totally in the moment where presence exists. And then the last point here is that so much of what we do say inside us are loops. They're reruns of the same anxiety-based or concerns that we are experiencing. When, again, this is a bit of a personal story, but I'm hoping that it serves you and maybe um, triggers some insights. This was what was going through my mind at the beginning of the pandemic. And I might say that it didn't sound maybe as um, refined. <laughs> it was like, oh no, oh shit, oh crap. Will I need to close my business? How will I pay my mortgage? Can I go grocery shopping? Am I really one of those uh, vulnerable uh, people in that age group? Now, how will I socialize? How will I get time to myself? These repeated, 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 along with whatever else I was doing. I'm curious now, um, it's always nice to get people involved, um, to write down, take the next minute, David, if you could just keep a timer going, um, take the next minute, some of you will do it, some of you won't, but I found it a really good ex exercise for me. Um, and write down verbatim or type, whatever's your preference, what's going on inside? What are the inner thoughts that are going through your mind? Positive, negative, neutral, judgmental. Um, if it's totally empty, that's wonderful too. Uh, but it's a good idea to take, I'm going to say go, take this next minute and write down what is happening inside, your inside dialogue. Go. Okay, and I'll keep an eye on it and let you know some of them in just a moment. Meanwhile, I'll start the Jeopardy music. <laughs> I think you would like one of Andrew Mann's presentations because when he does exercises, he plays smooth jazz. It's <laughs> a good idea. Right, helps fill the void. There's one comment now. Um, not really sure. So Dara, you may want to make sure you type the right staying stay. Maybe it's staying safe. So I'm not really sure. Oh, wondering when I'll land a job. That's one. Um, so Mike, I'm gonna refine this and, and say, it may not be one thought. Right. It could be, and, and often it's a question. So Gary might be saying, "I want. when am I going to finally land? Yep, Is this going to last right. forever? Uh, there's another comment from Vance. What tasks I need to do today? Okay. What do I have? So, mm -hmm. thinking yeah. ahead. Absolutely. So Giacomo has, the temptation is to think, what else do I need to focus on? Very similar. Another comment is texting a friend and listening to the presentation. So that's kind of splitting your presence. Thinking of, of other comparisons of presence. A negative thought, uh, life notice reduced from six months to 14 days. Not sure what that means. 
life. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe we'll get to hear some of these um, in dialogue at the end. Yep. When will I land? When can I work out today? Will I get the things done on my list today? What do I need to do today? Did I get something out of the freezer for dinner? Why is the dog so quiet? Yeah, so many things we focus on. Thinking of all the things I have to do today. When will I be able to get through, through to unemployment so they address my issue? Thinking about some of the jobs I still need to research. Yeah, a lot of good ones. It's good to, to, to get them out. Yep. What will people think of when I think of it? What will people think of what I think of in my post? I'm not really sure. What, pe what will people think of me from well, my post? No. Maybe? Well, no, I don't know if it's a typo, but didn't quite get it. Um, <laughs> what will I do over the weekend? What's on my calendar? What's on my task list? I should have taken my Zooms in the park today. Did I wash the blackberries enough? Lots of things. Very nice. Thank you. I think we're probably at a minute, no? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, okay. I got a lot of good feedback. Yep, yeah, but we, I'll share this with all of us a little later. Great. So thank you, everybody. I, I um, kind of had an expectation. Woo. It would look like this. This was me uh in i guess end of march or early <clears throat> excuse me early april am i safe will i get covid19 if i do can i survive it am i a carrier how will i pay my bills uh, what can i do to help how is my family is my daughter isolating what will the future be like how much money will i lose can i retire should i should i go forward with selling my house how reduced is my ira now what if i go bankrupt will i be homeless this is a verbatim and this is an accurate um, written assignment I gave to myself in the midst of anxiety. And why is this relevant? And though people may have just marked or written one or two ideas, this exercise, if you're feeling anxious, can be really helpful. It took less than two minutes. I just wrote out what was keeping me from being grounded what was influencing my lack of presence and my ability to navigate any next steps. So maybe I was more anxious than many of you are now. And certainly I think we all were more anxious before, although, hey, <laughs> if projections are accurate and there's a second pandemic height or increase, who knows? But if you tend to lean towards this and maybe for the webinar's purpose you didn't do a bunch of writing i highly recommend this exercise so we've talked about the external challenge of distraction that keeps us from being as present as we could be and then we've experienced some exercise and my story about the internal judgment, attitudes, and anxiety thought process that are internal distractions. And now I'm gonna ask you to kind of look at this and wonder what this is all about. So, this represents what I tend to do when I'm listening, whether it's to a webinar, when I'm not face to face with someone. While I'm listening and taking notes, I doodle. Does anybody else do something like that? The question is, is this multitasking? So our third challenge here has to do with multitasking. If I were listening to a podcast, say I had earbuds in, and I was listening to a webinar leader, as I am now online, I would be multitasking and my presence would be split. 
when I draw and doodle, it's an enhancement to my listening. It keeps my mind from going into linguistic sharing or splitting my attention. So all multitasking isn't the same. It depends on the sensory channels that are the different tasks. Some people listen to music and it helps them to write. Now I could listen to jazz that is, has no words, instrumental, and that might be helpful. But if I'm listening to lyrical pop or any language based music and I'm trying to write or conceptualize um, a coaching plan or look for uh, exercises to support a particular client, that won't work for me. So I'm going to ask another question that you could put into the chat, it's an easy one, because our brains are on one, on one level similar in that we tend to judge, we tend to go negative, um, we tend to, try to do more than one thing and have so many thoughts that go into loops, that part of us is pretty human. There are also a lot of differences in terms of how we learn and attend and what stimuli we can manage without losing our focus on one of them. So I, I hope this is understandable. Think special education, which is part of my background. Different brains have different tolerances and aptitudes for different subjects but also different types of multitasking. So here's the question. And it's less about multitasking, it's more about your learning style. To get information, get the news, let's say what's the pandemic, let's say you're gonna learn about the pandemic, what's currently going on or about the upcoming election, the news. Do you prefer television or online um, online television, so streaming. So the news in terms of images and words and voice. So I would say that is, let's put T for TV. Or is your preference to read print, whether it's newspaper, text or online, but without a video. So that would be R for reading. Or do you prefer to get the news by just listening, like someone's telling you the information, either a podcast or radio? So R we said was reading, T is TV or um, video. And the last one would be L for listening. Those are usually the three main channels. There are also uh, hands-on channels, but I'm curious. T for TV or video, L for listening and R for reading. And later on when I get to uh, look at the chat, I may collate this and figure out what the percentage um, of this group, uh, per, what, what, what's the makeup of this group in terms of their preferences? If the answers are coming in, it seems like uh, more the T's are the most common, then the R's for reading, and then the L for listening. Just unofficial, just kind of how I'm scanning the chats. And, it's almost expected in a certain way because we have been such a visual um, so society um, or a text-based society. Uh, we never really had a course in listening in grade school. It was assumed we had reading, writing, arithmetic, 
history, social studies, etc. But we really were assumed to know how to listen well, um, being taught at home or in preschool. Uh, but most of the time, never, I don't think anybody in grade school had a course designated to listening unless you were speech impaired or listening impaired. So it's kind of um, expected in a certain way that the television and the reading would, would predominate. But that also goes to say, or it also intimates why sometimes it's easy to multitask when you're listening to a webinar. You can't be seen, you can't be touched. It's an online platform of learning. Um, so you're not as skilled in, at listening. And listening creates a big piece of communication. Um, maybe I'll tell you a story later on. So thank you for doing that brief exercise. I will take a look at that later. All right, moving on to, so I, I, I wanna recap the multitasking thing. You can multitask as my doodle shows in non-competing sensory channels. And it doesn't mean that everybody who um, is good at one skill will multitask in the same way as another person. It's a very personal thing. Some people actually listen better when they don't look at people. The looking is a distraction. Uh, I sometimes will, if it weren't in my career of speaking to people and I'm listening to technical information, I'm gonna deflect. I'm going to listen without looking because I'm so people oriented, I will start to pay attention to every visual detail. So just to know that if you are multitasking, that doesn't mean you're bad. Some people say, I shouldn't be multitasking. I know it's wrong. There's different kinds. And some of it can be supportive of learning and, and paying attention and paying attention or, or having your attention focused is what we were talking about in terms of presence. So let's talk a little bit about Zoom fatigue. Maybe you're experiencing it, maybe you're not, maybe you did, and now you've moved from that. The first couple weeks of adjusting to working from home and seeing clients and to attending webinars, and then using the computer as I normally do to research ideas, to communicate on email, to te check my text messages, to um, write reports. My eyes were tired and my soul was tired. The imbalance is part of it. The imbalance of not having enough social interaction, feeling restricted in terms of the bigger pandemic situation, and then only having this tool to make contact or a telephone but something was missing. And for me, it was exhausting. And I'm curious if it felt exhausting to others. So one of the big challenges was how to survive Zoom fatigue. And it went beyond getting better at Zoom. It, there were other um, choices to be made. So let's, let's go into some of those suggestions. I think I said this before, but if I didn't, um, for me, this is totally true. I would rather have you here or not here than to be able to see you and know that you're not really paying attention. So in, in a live situation when I'm a speaker, if I see a lot of multitasking or sidebars or tired eyes or antsy you know, movement, I'm gonna stop and I'm going to check in with the audience or I'm going to 
um, ask a question um, so that I can bring everybody back. So my, my goal is to have your presence. And if you're checking out, then to know that you've checked out. I'm reiterating this agenda because I want to keep us on track. Um, we looked at what is presence in order to know how to be present. You got to have a definition here. And it's that full attention, that being in the zone, that feeling of flow, that being in the moment and the presence of yourself in that moment is also a presence or a breath or an experience of your energy. So presence is done, is showing up, but it's from the inside and outside, but it's also fortifying when you show up your own personal nature, your essence, your fullness. We talked about external challenges, disruptions, internal challenges, your mindset, your attitude, your belief systems. And now let's look at some suggestions that will manage those challenges and serve you going forward to build your presence. Remember I said executive presence isn't about just dress for success. It's more about the integrity and the invisible characteristics that we don't see, but that influence how you behave and how you are in life. So here are some of the suggestions that I've both researched and tried out for myself. Being a pretty intuitive uh, kind of personality and a one person business consultant, I don't have a whole lot of external management issues and sometimes just my calendar is enough for me in terms of knowing what I'm going to do each day. But when I didn't have clients because of shutdown and lockdown and things became lean, pretty much I am sure like many of you in transition for a period of time, I had too much time on my hands and not enough activity. And it became very apparent to me that I needed to make things to do, whether it was decluttering, whether it was watching a webinar, participating in an online discussion. And those things became very important to schedule along with my exercise and my clients and the writing work. Sometimes it's like, okay, you got a block of time. That's when you're going to do your writing. No, everything was explicitly put on the calendar, even eating, because it showed me how I was living and it prevented that feeling of over spaciousness and feeling undone. If ever anybody watched that movie, that uh, animation, Undone, felt a little bit like that. I do recommend doing something you love once a day. I don't care if it's eating, walking, drinking, um, dancing, listening to music. I found at one point the silence of doing nothing was disruptive to my soul. So I put on a, 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 some music. It happened to be Bonnie Raitt. And it was peppy and I was in the moment of Bonnie Raitt singing and that became kind of like a mantra almost every so often when things seemed gloomy or uncomfortable. That music, and I didn't have to listen to the whole album, not even a whole song, just shifted my energy a little bit. So do something you love, drawing, painting, um, gardening, sometimes just snipping a flower and putting it in a vase as a break from either the isolation or the, for some people, 
by the way, they're, they're busier than ever. So they don't get a lot of this other meditative or grounding time either. And I have to recommend that the same idea, you know, take a break, do something you love. It doesn't have to be for a very long time. Uh, stop multitasking when you're doing multitasking that competes with each other. And like at the beginning, when I showed some photos and asked the question of what puts you in flow, attending a golf tournament or participating in a, a sport or an activity or watching a sunset, you can actually take 30 seconds to a minute and go to that space, that happy space that's represented by a photo or a picture. Those 30 seconds to one minute can be uplifting, empowering, regrounding, and it's not a long time. And even if you have a full schedule, you have 30 seconds to a minute to make yourself do something other. Prioritize your tasks. Um, not that familiar with the Eisenhower matrix, but it is a tool that says this is high priority, low priority, immediate need, or um, it's, it's a four matrix um, process. I've said this in other ways, take breaks. The breaks could be just getting up. Sitting is part of the Zoom fatigue. You know, we are sitting, we are looking, tunneling to the camera or to the Zoom screen. It is exhausting for many people or some people, it's, they don't even think about it. But for those of you who find um, it exhausting, take some breaks. It could just mean standing up, doing a stretch, um, making a phone call, walking into another room. To grow presence, you need to get beyond the chatter, the judgment, the cognitive, and create, reconnect with your inner self, with your body, with your spirit. Breath, meditation, exercise are three tools I'm sure um, you're familiar with that can get you there. So I'm going to re-ask you this question, and I'm going to ask you to first, before you answer it to yourself, or if you want to put it in the chat, take a deep breath. Let's do it together. And maybe one more. and let it out. And think about the activities that nurture your soul, where your presence is full, and where you feel at one with the activity, and the judgments, and the what to do's, and the where to go's, are silent. Is it art? Concerts? Dancing? Singing? Photography? Nature, flying, fishing, lounging, being with family and friends, that perfect rainbow, 
the stroll in the sand along the shore. I believe it was Carolyn Welsh who said this, but I agree, at least for myself. I feel happiest when I am present in the moment to what's happening as it happens, even if it's boring or if it's exciting, pleasant or unpleasant. So getting back to the title of this webinar, learning how to be present supports staying present, knowing what presence is. And staying present requires self-awareness and choice and self-compassion and patience. And stretching your ability to listen and when your mind drifts to commit to return that attention, to connect to an activity or photo of an activity so that you can be immersed in flow, or maybe it's the activity of breathing or meditation or yoga or exercise. Breath is something that I always um, was uncomfortable with. I must say, it's like, oh my God, they're listening to me breathe. It's too personal. It took a long time for me to acknowledge that and learn that breathing restores my inner connection. Maybe you know it, maybe you don't. And then get up and move and walk and do something to move your energy because energy and presence are very much connected. My work is about communication. There is no business without communication. Think about it. You are either typing something, listening to something, or speaking or reading. Language runs business, but it's the connection between people that makes it blossom. These are some of the services I'm doing now. They're all remote with some um, once in a while uh, in-person opportunities since I have a studio. I'm also uh, promoting essay writing for teenagers uh, with their college applications. So if you know someone who has that need, please be in touch. I'm Eileen Sinet, 30 plus years of speaking that connects. And this is my journey. I've added the resources that were helpful to me in producing this seminar, this webinar today. Um, I hope you find them valuable, and I believe that's the end. So thank you very much, and I would be honored to have your questions. Well, thank you, Eileen. Yes, there are some questions. Can so I get back to a view where I can see people? Yeah, at the top, or you should have a... Or well, maybe, well, you could stop sharing your screen as one, or at the control panel that you have, um, there should be a button for viewing cameras or viewing active cameras. Again, uh, I'm not exactly sure what your Mac version of GoToMeeting looks like. Okay, I cancel share screen, maybe? That's good. I can, I can remove that from you as well. Oh, there. Okay, and to get, oh, here's 66 people. Yeah, so you could, at the top, there should be a, a, an option to view, uh, view. It might be view everyone or view who's talking or view active cameras. I think view active cameras will be helpful for you. So some of the plain black boxes just won't be seen. You'll see everyone a little bigger. Hmm, 
I'm on a Mac and I don't see that. Not at the top. Oh, you have something that says yeah. view everyone or. Wait a second. Or is it somewhere else on the Mac? Well, I now see myself, but okay. let's see if there's another. Hmm. Again, so what, what I have is a control. Maybe it's you have it somewhere. You might be seeing something view who's talking or might say view everyone. It might say yeah. view. Right. Point. So you oh. at the very least want to view active cameras. Oh, it says reattach cameras. That's what it says. Oh, OK. So um, there you go. OK, so you're seeing people. I'm seeing lots of people. Thank you okay. for being here. Uh, some of you I've met before and some of you um, I haven't. And there's a lot of non faces there, you know, but it's great. So um, curious uh, your questions, if you have about presence, your opinion on presence, your experience on pre uh, regarding presence. Yep. Anything? So. Yes, so I'll read this. So Frank has a question. Um, if someone schedules everything, what happens to spontaneity or openness to opportunities that arise unexpectedly? That's a, that's a good one, Frank. So I think maybe everything is a little bit extreme. So every, obviously you don't schedule when you get to the bathroom, it happens. Uh, when you're blinking your eyes, it happens. Um, I'm thinking in terms of maybe more general ideas. So it's a good it's a good point that you're making, Frank, that there is a need for spontaneity as well. But to have it too loose, too spacious, I think can be um, detrimental, particularly when you're pivoting from the kind of situation that was your typical normal. So uh, good point. Schedule more things. I should right in my next webinar. Okay, and actually Frank has a follow-up question. What is the relationship between being present and mindfulness? Yeah, um, Carolyn Welsh is a good, is an authority on this subject and I think they are used pretty much interchangeably. Um, but I, because I've been asked to work with people on executive presence, it's not so, I think mindfulness builds presence. Let's put it that way. So the idea of being in your body and being in your breath and being grounded within and knowing who you are and turning off all the thought judgment stuff more often than not when you want to not have that stuff working because judgment and thought process is certainly very important, builds the muscle of being fully present and engaged or kind of like an aura of energy that is part of your, part of you. You know, you don't end here because your body ends here. We are sharing space. And um, the more positive, I believe, uh, experiences and and, and attitudes and beliefs that we embrace build our character and it's not only built from the inside, it exudes to the outside. So to answer that question from my point of view, it's they're very related, but I think there's, you might use mindfulness to get to presence, to get to expanding the way people engage or believe or, or see you, process you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Leora asked, can we see the contact slide again? Um, you know what I'll do is I'll just say, the slides are now posted on our PSG of Mercer County website. I did put the link in the chat. The only reason why I would not put the slide up again, um, Eileen prefers to see everybody's face right now and on her, screen it kind of takes that away from her experience but the slide deck is there and her uh, phone number if you want to contact her is 609-799-1400 well we could put it in the chat right now too oh yeah yeah so um, you know what I'll, I'll put that contact information in the chat and in at speaking that connects is my email 
Okay. And the website, speakingthatconnects.com. Terrific. So that would be lovely. If you want to have a conversation, I have, I am not overworked right now. <laughs> I would love to be engaged with uh, more clients, but more conversations. So feel free to reach out. Yep, and I, I will uh, paste that right now. Where it goes, speakingthatconnects.com. It's in the chat. Uh, Julie has a question. Who is the author of The Gift of Presence? Oh, Caroline Welch, W-E-L-C-H. And so I just typed that also as you were saying it. Um, and Pat is asking, how important or different or similar is body language on Zoom? Ah, I have a presentation on that one. It's so different. Um, so we're all, you know, in some, when, when I was asked to do a body language Zoom compared to uh, live presentation, I had to really research the heck out of this and also experience it. So at first I thought, and there's a little backdrop here. At first I thought, you know, given Black Lives Matter and the pandemic, how important is this that we look a certain way or that we do things a certain way? Um, but after speaking with some of my colleagues who said, Eileen, this is an opportunity for you. Think of, you know, this is, you can help people. And so body language is, is different. On one hand, we are all equally given the same amount of space. That doesn't happen in real life in a room. The tall people usually have an advantage. The white people, men, usually have an advantage. Height, might. Um, the prettier people usually have an advantage. That's We're not seeing our lower bodies. We don't know what you're if you're wearing pajamas or not. Your image is more the language and attention, your body language is more what's being received, what you say or what you don't say. And your, your, your Zoom image, so your background, the angles, the lighting, those are influencing the reduced amount of body language that you're getting. I can see 60 some uh, rectangles here, but I can't see if someone's gonna raise an eyebrow or do something like this, unless I'm in, you know, one-to-one, -one, unless I'm seeing you as a, you know, an individual. So your whole lower body gives off information, even if you're not planning to it, the way you sit, all right? Some people in a meeting might sit back and, and they're, you don't even see my hands right now. You don't know what this is like. So for, if there's some level setting that's happening <clears throat> in these rectangles, we're less judgmental in general because we're not seeing and judging humans in the same way. So in terms of body language, let's say stance and seated posture, no one really cares unless you're you know, if your image, and I saw this, is like this being projected, this is a poor body language. And if it's like this, this is poor digital Zoom body language. But we're pretty forgiving. And as we started off, David and, and Joe, I think my lighting, I had a, an external light and it was reflecting in my glasses. I decided to eliminate the light because it was being recorded and that would be a distraction. So um, basically you don't have the, the movement and the subtleties of communication in a physical way. You don't get the feedback. I, alert, I, I alluded to this. You don't get personal feedback. When I look at David, he doesn't know I'm looking at David. When I look at the camera, everybody can assume I'm looking out. You know, that's a journalistic um, training tool. Um, is that, I don't know if, who you are, because your name isn't there, but 
Um, I, you know, when I get a smile, I don't know if you're smiling at me or smiling at somebody else in the room or a television behind, you know, that's behind you or in front of you. So we only get a very small, <clears throat> excuse me, amount of accuracy and input in terms of body language. This is where, like on a phone call, your voice and your words start to matter more than your physicality. And I would say in terms of just doing the best you can with what you have, angles and lighting and background. But a lot of people aren't even concerned about background. So different folk, different strokes for different folks. But I hope I answered that question. You're truncated, you don't see details, you're not personalizing anything. And it's um, very two-dimensional. It's certainly a different a different presence, you're right. Oh, sounds like someone's got a phone um, microphone on. If you don't mind, just please muting your mic. Let's see if I can find that. Um, as for um, questions, um, it looks like that is it. There's only one more from Ann. Are we providing a recording for this call? Yes, we are. It will be on our YouTube channel later today. Um, we have been fortunate that all of our presenters for the last uh, 22, 23 weeks have allowed us to record the presentation. And of course, Eileen, you are welcome to use parts of this if you're going to make your own commercial or snippets put on your website. Please feel free to do that because we appreciate you giving us time. In exchange, we will give you a video. Seems thank like you. a fair swap. Thank All you. right. So, Eileen, thank you so much. I certainly appreciate uh, the support that you continue to provide to PSG of Mercer County, and I know other groups as well. You know, these online meetings can sometimes be so exhausting and difficult compared to in person meetings. And certainly, because of the pandemic, we're doing so many more of them rather than as probably less frequently. So I really hope that from this presentation, you got some good tips and ideas so you can stay present and manage your presence uh, a little bit better uh, through communicating either online or if you do have the opportunity to meet people in person as well. So I hope you got some benefit that way. I did like that quote. I think it was, we are happiest when we are present for what is happening as it happens. And so I guess if we think about all our happy occasions, uh, it could be a birthday party or a family event or completing an important project, we really appreciate it right in the moment. And I just think that's a very optimistic and positive thought. So thank you for sharing that as well. You're welcome. And I'm so, happy to, oh. um, you know, offline, you're, uh, call me if you need me. Yep, yep, I did uh, post Eileen's contact information in chat as well. If you would like to download the chat, we're gonna provide the full chat a little bit later today, but if you want it right now and you have the GoToMeeting app, at least the Windows version, not sure about the Mac version, I'm sorry, there's an uh, GoToMeeting icon in the upper left corner, it looks like an asterisk and says go to meeting right after it. That's actually a link to a menu, and if you click that and drop it down, you will see the third option is save chat log, so you can save it um, right to your own PC. Uh, if we have any other chat over the next few minutes, that's when I'll close out the chat at the end. You'll get the whole thing a little later. Um, the slide deck, Eileen's slide deck, uh, is now on our website. Uh, our website on the middle of the right side has a link called Meeting Presentation Documents. We called the link that because this is a meeting and those are presentation documents. So you click that, you go to a new page and the very first item that is Eileen's, the link to Eileen's presentation. We will have um, the chat and other things in there as well. All the other links below that are all of our prior presentations where presenters were able to share their information with us as well. So that's what we keep in meeting presentation documents. I um, want to let you know what's coming up over the next couple of weeks. Um, August, I can't believe, is uh, soon coming to an end, but uh, August has become our coach month. And next week, career coach Larry Finkelstein will be here. His program is called Pivot, and he is going to be talking about 
uh, changing directions, changing careers, and the, the tips and techniques for doing just that. So that'll be next Friday, August 28th, career coach Larry Finkelstein. And then as we move into September, absolutely Abby. Abby Kohat will be here. I am so glad that she is uh, able to come back. She had been very busy earlier in the year with other obligations. She's now been able to make time to visit the career support groups again. And her program is your 2020 career, becoming a victor rather than a victim. She has such positive, uplifting, uplifting and relevant programs. Always fun. I hope you can see absolutely Abby Kohut as well on September 4th. Uh, George Pace has been keeping his live webinars active on his Facebook page. If you're interested, you can go to facebook.com slash keep pace, facebook.com slash keep pace. Two Ps in Keep Pace, they're right in the middle. Of course, you can visit some other organizations and find their meetings as well. One place to find meetings, of course, is Alex Freund's Landing Expert List. And that is landingexpert.com, landingexpert.com. And when you're on his webpage, you click on the Networking List link and you put in uh, a search and you can find all of them that are in New Jersey, Southern New York, um, and Eastern Pennsylvania and Northern Delaware. So great resource for all people who are looking for career support groups. Um, our cousins organizations, uh, PSG of Central New, New Jersey meets on Mondays. So they'll be meeting Monday at 1030 a.m. Their program is also virtual now, psgcnj.biz, psgcnj.biz, and also PSG of Morris County. Uh, psgmc.org, psgmc.org, they will be presenting on Wednesdays at nine o'clock and they are virtual as well. So go to those websites and get that information. Um, New Jersey Job Seekers also meets every Tuesday evening at 7.30 in the evening. Uh, job Seekers is the oldest continuously running job seeker support group, um, if not in the United States, certainly in New Jersey since 1982. And so the next meeting will be uh, coming up on uh, the 25th. Ed Hahn is giving a presentation. He is a LinkedIn guru. He is a recruiter. And he also facilitates um, the New Jersey job seekers. I will be posting the connection info in our PSG of Mercer County LinkedIn group. I don't have that info just yet, but I will post it shortly. So keep your eye, excuse me, eyes open for that. So um, that is our meeting for the day. I will keep the program, the, the presentation or the go to meeting open for a while longer for anyone that wants to hang out and do any kind of open networking. And so just give us a minute for that. But in the meantime, I will say once again, thank you so much, Eileen. Appreciate well, the, the continued you, support and the wonderful you. program. And uh, hope to see everybody virtually next week, unless we bump into each other in the supermarket with our masks on. But uh, otherwise, we'll see you virtually next week. So bye, everybody.